at a time, even if it's one exercise or one movement at a time, eventually you can piece together a protocol for yourself. Now, if you're still not sure and you've watched it and go, I'm not sure with what I have, then just invite the medical healthcare practitioner who knows your body best to preview it for you. And then the two of you can have a conversation and you can be make a better informed decision. So the issues I'm going to bring up over here would be anybody with rotator cuff muscle issues, um, if you have a pinched nerve in the neck, if you're medicated or not, and unfortunately some people are not, for hypertension, high blood pressure, vertigo, GERD, and for those, those three, the hypertension, vertigo, and GERD, whenever you're on the floor on your back, I want you to have the towel underneath your head because I don't want a blood rush to the head. Also, well now, if you've ever been diagnosed or ever had an issue with the back or spine, um, also knee issues, and in some cases, even carpal tunnel syndrome. So I'm going to be able to offer you modifications and adjustments that you can make using the props or another type of position. And there's always the bed, if you can't get on the floor on your back to do the work, and there's always the chair to do some of the work. And you know, the very first video Amy and I ever did together was also yoga stretches done in a chair, yeah. you know? So maybe, Amy, you can give them that link also yeah. because this way they have an alternative and go, oh, I can't really do what she's doing there and I can't figure it out in a chair. So you have one already on the platform for you. And um, yeah, so that's all the issues that I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, to, to speak about here. Excellent. Well, let's start the class. I just can't wait for this. Yeah, and I've barely been in this pose a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to show you that um, you can also use props here. And I'm going to support this knee to lift it up because it's been super flexed for a while. Now, if you have knee issues, here's a great way to use your towel that you're going to fold it up, just roll it up, and then wring it out as if it's wet. And you're gonna wedge it in behind that knee crease. Now don't worry about tying it because that doesn't matter. But it's the back of it that's nice and open now. Now some, I have some people who do their work, Amy, they have two towels. They also sometimes need to put blocks underneath their knees. For some people, they get on the floor in a seated cross-legged position and their knees are like up to here. And they're thinking that, well, my hips are tight. Well, they might very well be, but also I can guarantee you, so is your lower back. So that's when you want to sit on a block or stack two. The higher up you are, folks, the more the low back will go into proper alignment. That lumbar spine area is a natural lordotic curve and extension. It will put your cervical spine into proper alignment because they do the same movement. The gravity will drop your thighs down and lengthen and open up right through here with the hip flexors. So it's not always just my knees. It's a lot of other structures. So I'm just going to pull this out because I don't really need it, but I wanted to show you how you can use it. The other thing when you come to the floor, let's bring the hands underneath the buttock flesh, and you're going to pull the flesh straight back and out wide toward the shoulder. So you're sitting up and forward on the front edge of your ischial tuberosity, your sits bones. Then the other adjustment you want to place the hands behind the knee. So I'm wedging the hands, two hands, not one, two hands. One hand on a calf, one hand on the thigh. I'm pulling and rolling the calf and the thigh flesh away from each other. This is a little hack, folks, for opening up the meniscus and the, the tendinous attachments of your muscles, the ligaments. It's all really helpful for knee issues. Now I'm going to rest my hands on my lap, palms up, right hand on top of the left with the palms facing the ceiling. We're going to close the eyes and let's just take a few moments to center in for our practice here together today. 
inhaling and exhaling out the nose. Heart center is generously lifted with the shoulders back and down and energy coming up and out the crown of the head, the Sahasrara Chakra, as we inhale through the nose. Exhale out the nose if it's possible. Or you simply breathe in and out the mouth, whatever works. Now I'm going to bring the palms together in front of the heart. This is forming a mudra. A mudra is a hand gesture. And this is Anjali mudra. And this is the hand gesture of the angels. Inhaling. And exhaling. and creating an intention or a dedication for our practice here together today. Perhaps sending someone in need a healing, loving life of energy. And um, perhaps it could be for yourself as well. Expressing gratitude and appreciation for our bodies, for our health, our good health. And taking this positive energy forward without, with, with us throughout the course of our yoga practice, and then perhaps even off the yoga mat, and taking this with us throughout the day. And now let's slowly open the eyes, and lower the hands down. And let's come into some nice big shoulder rolls. Up, back, and down. Up, back, and down. So this posture we're in is called Sukhasana. And it means easy pose. Not so easy for some of us, right? And now I'm going to bring the hands underneath the knees. And because we've been here a long time, take your time bringing the legs up and out. And I'm going to extend one leg at a time. And then I push the calf flesh, that's the back of that low leg, down toward the ankles. I'm going to do it on both legs. Ooh, there's that moment of a creaky knee. Now, some people do this, and that feels nice, but that doesn't do anything. This, I mean, it feels nice, that's good, but this is really reopening the back of the knee, and then you want to tap it out, or maybe windshield, wiper it. Now, from here, I'm going to come off my cushion, set it to the side, and reserve the right to use it again. And now, I'm going to bring the feet out in front. Now, this is also a position that people could come into if they are more comfortable than a seated cross-legged position. So this is the butterfly pose. I'm going to pull that butt flesh back and out. Now, I want you to watch something. People tend to do this when they do come into this position. Well, this is where you grab those shins and you use those strong arms, you depress the shoulder girdle, and you pull yourselves upright and hold yourselves here. Yeah, you have some muscle going on, some muscle activation, depressing shoulder, and just hold here. The thing about restorative yoga is that there's not a lot of poses, but you are holding them for quite some time. Depressing shoulders, breath in and out through the nose. We don't want to lean forward. It's not about Vatakanasana cobblers. I have my feet, oh, a good solid foot and a half, two feet away from me. So what we're also helping here is the sacroiliac joint, that SI joint, sacrum ilium. That means anything that's attached to those areas will benefit. 
Now you can choose to stay here or you can slip your hands underneath your ankles and take a hold of the tops of your feet. If you can't reach there, you grab your shins. You can also insert your strap and hold them as well. For those of you with back spine issues, please stay upright. Do not come into this forward flexion. So inhale, I'm gonna lift the head and the heart. And then on the exhale, those of you with hypertension, vertigo, and gird. You're going to take a block, put it on your feet to lower your head. Otherwise, that head stays up. I'm lengthening forward with my heart. I'm pushing down in my elbows. I'm pulling from my bicep, coming into full out diamond pose. Oh, so lovely on that back. So lovely on that SI joint. Holding here, pulling forward, reaching back. Take a couple of breaths. Inhale, lift the head and the heart. Try it again. Exhale, taking it forward. Breathing into those back muscles. No hunching of the shoulders. Then inhale, palms down. Exhale, I lift the head. It's like I'm pulling forward to come up. And then the hands go to the outside of the knees and slowly draw those knees together. And just hold here for the moment. And I'm going to come back into easy pose. So that Sukhasana. So I'm going to bring my cushion back here. Here we go, crossing the legs. And don't forget, butt flesh, knee crease adjustment. So I want to put the spine through all of its movements for you. So basically, I'm going to hook my hands over the knees. And on the inhale, I'm going to lift my head and heart, draw the shoulders back. I'm starting to form a little bit of a back bend. And then I lift the chin up. This is a seated version of the cow posture. Now, those of you with the back spine issues, you are not going to do the next posture. You are going to come in to neutral. Got it? Whereas the rest of us, we're going to come into the seated cat and we're going to come to a spinal flexion, which is a rounding of the spine, deeply pulling the belly button in, going after that transverse abdominis, the deepest of the core muscles. And then inhale, lifting head and heart. Spinal extension, which is your pal. Exhaling into the cat. Again, inhale. And then one more. Exhale, let's hold here. Pull in that belly button. Get the sense of working that abdominal muscle. And then we slowly come back up to neutral. Now, I'd like to come into a lateral flexion here with you. So that's a side bend. I'm going to take my blocks, bring them in the same line as my hip joint, the coxal joint, a femoral joint. It's got a couple of names. I'm going to place my hand on the block, opposite hand to the waist. Those of you with rotator cuff or pitch nerve in neck, keep your hand where it is. Otherwise, if you don't, we're going to now slide over. And I'm sliding the block out. With my left hand, I'm going to push that left thigh down because I want to keep the left glute down on the floor. The tendency for a lateral flexion is people lift that opposite hip. We want it down. And if you don't want to use blocks, you can cup your fingertips and use them as a prop as well. Belly button is in. And then you can bring your arm out, up, and over. But what if you have a shoulder issue that only allows you to go here? That's fine. Keep a straight elbow. Don't do this thinking you're going to get over further. You're not. And But those of you who can, take it and bring it by the ear, turning that torso toward the ceiling, stretching those intercostal muscles we were talking about between the ribs. 
also the oblique muscles at the waist. They're basically responsible for turning and twisting from the waist. Hold here, lateral flexion. It's a form of anjaneyasana, crescent moon. Inhale, turn that left palm up, grab an imaginary hook. Exhale, I'm going to push down in my left knee to come all the way back to center. And then we're going to take it to the other side. Holding here, sternum up. Inhaling and exhaling, rolling shoulder back, pushing thigh down. I just got a spinal adjustment by pushing the thigh down. And then arm out, up and over. Reaching, lifting, breathing, holding. Lock or cupped fingertips, your call. And then inhale, turn the right palm up, grab an imaginary hook. Exhale, push down into that right knee, come all the way back to center. And then finally, with the movements of the spine that I want to make sure we totally get in here, is put your hands on your knees. And I'm going to come into what's called a Sufi grind. And it looks like this. So those of you who have those back spine issues, if you're going to try it, I want the hands on blocks, and I want the movement upright and small. Got it? You're not to do all that spine flexion stuff unless you already know what your issues are and if it's been approved for you. So what am I actually doing here? Well, here's kind of a cat, right? Because I'm lifting up. Here's a lateral flexion. Here's the um, actually, this is the calf, pardon me, lateral flexion. Here's the calf. Here's the calf. That extension, lateral flexion, flexion, lateral flexion, extension, and reverse. So the hips are forward. That means we're getting a really nice rotation of the vertebral column, massaging the abdominal organs and intestines as well. And slowly back up to center. And now from here, I'm going to bring the legs out in front. Support. Push the calf flesh forward, right? Those knees were super flexed. And I'm going to get rid of that cushion. Set it back again. I'm going to use it later. Now, I would like you to work with your right leg straight out in front. You're going to bend that left knee. Notice I support always underneath the joint. And place the sole of your left foot somewhere into that right inner leg. I don't care where it lands. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see how this hip, Amy, can you see this, how this hip is a little further back? Yeah. Okay. Now, we're women. We have a Q angle. That has to do with going from the iliac crest, the high pelvic bone, down to the knees. The men don't experience this. Therefore, for men, I want you to keep that right leg straight. Women, I want you to bring that leg one to two inches to your right. Then I'm going to shift. So I'm pulling with my hand my right hip back, and I want the men to do the same, even if it's straight out in front, and the left hip forward. Now, as a woman, I am absolutely squared off in the pelvis. Now, you can place the hands underneath here, do that knee crease adjustment. You can use your towel. You can put a block underneath. It's, it's all good, whatever you want to do. And then inhale and lift the arms up. Exhale, I'm hinging. Maybe you need to walk your hands out in front. Back spine issues, use that yoga strap. Stay upright. So I'm going to be very cautious on my approach here. This is area of former injury for me. So I just take my time. And it's called seated head to knee pose, also known as Janyu Shirshasana. Hold here, pulling right hip back, left hip forward. I'm bringing my left shoulder, my left ribs in the direction of the right big toe. You can use that strap. You can hold on. You can grab your wrist. So my left hand is grabbing the right wrist, 
right palm facing forward. I'm uniting my index, the tip of the index finger to the thumb tip. It's called chin mudra. And this mudra is the symbol of the union of the individual to the universal soul, stretching out the plantar fascia underlying the foot, the Achilles tendon, the calf, the hamstring, the glute, the back. There's a lot going on here. And from a yoga anatomical perspective, this is excellent for the kidneys, the spleen, and the liver. And then inhale, I lift the head and the heart. You can slide your hands in, up to the sky, and then exhale, hands into namaste. Support that left knee, extend it out, push the calf flesh. Now I'm going to bring that right leg straight back out in front, bending the left knee. Some of you may need to work here. Some of you, if you can cross over comfortably to the outside of your right knee, do it. Great. Now, if you have a right knee issue, you could be up on a block. That will help with a towel support underneath the knee. Or just stay here and keep the right leg straight out in front. Um, if you don't have a knee issue, then you're just going to tuck the heel to the outside of the left glute. I'm taking my left Thumb, and I'm going to push that hip down. I want to vigorously hug that left thigh toward my torso. Now, some of you may not be able to get the arm around. No big deal. Slide your hand ooh, ooh, underneath the window of the legs and just hold for support here because either way, you will be able to get a beautiful twist. So I'm vigorously hugging in. I'm moving the belly flesh out of the way. And then inhale the left arm up. Take on the exhale a lateral external rotation of the shoulder. Notice how much I exaggerated. Cut the fingertips to the floor, especially if you're carpal tunnel. Don't flatten. It puts that wrist into extension. Cut fingertips or use your block. Inhale, lengthen spine using left hand and left foot, and then exhale, turn and twist. In Ardha, Matsyandrasana, which is half spinal twist, half fish pose. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, you take that right elbow to the outside of the left leg. You immediately or internally rotate that shoulder. You bring your hand, hello there, through the window of the legs. You can bind at the fingers, or if you can wedge that wrist in there, kind of wiggle it in, then you've got a hold of it. I push down, inhale, lift up, exhale, take the twist. Hold here. Twisting postures are excellent for digestion, aiding peristalsis. And then inhale, take the head forward, Exhale, lower the foot down and bring the torso back to center. Inhale, exhale, counter position, lower down. Exhale, hold, inhale, come back up. And exhale, bring the legs straight out in front. Both knees were hyperflex. Let's push the calf flesh down toward the ankles and you're going to Shake, 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 a windshield wiper, tap it out, whatever feels good for you. Now we're going to keep that left leg out in front, bending right knee. Don't assume, folks, that one side is as tight as the other. You might be, be able to full out do a pose on one side and the other side you need props. So what? You get to do it, right? That's the glory of all of this. So you cross on over and on this side, I take a little, I'm a little hesitant because I have a little bit more of an injury on the other side, an old one. So just, you know, pay attention to it. That's all it is. Wrap around, pull the flesh, get that right glute down, hug it in. Inhale up. Exhale, laterally rotate. I might be landing on some of my toys here. I'm going to pull them back a bit. So cup the fingertips or flatten the palms, but not the carpal tunnel. Cup your fingertips instead. So inhale, lengthen spine. 
Exhale, turn and twist, looking over that right shoulder. Breath in and out through the nose. Now we want to go to the next level, okay. Left elbow, medially rotate from the shoulder, hand through the window of the legs, interlock or wiggle to the wrist, and then lift, turn and twist. This is a big stretch to the gluteal lateral rotators, folks. Big stretch in either position, foot down or up. And then bring the head back to center and lower it down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale up. Now, I kind of reversed it a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to bring this leg back out for the Janu Shirshasana. I don't want to forget that. We'll be out of balance, and that's the total antithesis to yoga. So you see how I'm turned. So I'm going to go over to the right a little bit and then shift myself. So pull left hip back, right hip is forward. Open up the knee crease. Men, that, that left leg is straight out in front. Turning toward that left big toe, right? On this side, I'm going to take even more caution because I'm pulling the butt flesh back. And that's going to help me lengthen the muscle. And just using the breath, right? If you find you're in a posture, folks, and you start doing that stuff where you're really holding your breath, you have gone beyond your edge, and that's not going to serve you. It's not going to serve you. Nobody cares if you can touch your head to the floor. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter in the course of life. What matters is what's going on with your body as you do a movement. And we're all different. We all have unique patterns, etc. It is what it is. Inhale, exhale, Janu Shirshasana, seated head to knee, bringing that right shoulder, right ribs toward the left big toe, big stretch to that whole posterior chain. By the way, this is a wonderful posture for women who get uh, painful menses, wonderful to put yourself into compression. And then inhale, lift the head and the heart from the slide back up, arms up to the sky, inhale. And exhale back to namaste position. Stand out in front, push your calf flesh, shake it out. And now let's play seated wide angle, Upa Vishta Konasana. So I'm going to grab the props. Actually, I have this back here. Grab that for you. So there's a couple of ways I'm going to show you how you can do this and why I think a yoga strap is so important. Okay. Otherwise, like I said, you can use you know, two shorter ones. So you pull your butt flesh back and out. There's always oppositional movement in yoga. So I'm pushing down and out simultaneously. So what happens is I'm lengthening the posterior side and I'm contracting the anterior side. For some of you, the back spine issues in particular, I don't want you to come into the forward flexion. Everybody knows that this is a forward bend, right? And everybody gets all super excited to charge down to the floor, but there's a way of getting there that's safe and not so safe, okay? So for those of you with the back spine, here's your eight foot strap. With the shorter straps, I find that people do this because they're so short and they're holding the very edge of the strap and the arms are stick straight, but they're pulling from the shoulders. When you have this longer strap, I can push out, press down with the legs, but I can pull from the biceps. Those shoulders are down. And I'm absolutely working on a stunning version of sitting up tall. This is a great way to approach the workbook, folks, and you will get that stretch at the hip adductor muscles, those inner thighs. Another way to do it, I am holding the position with my toes all stretched out. 
is use the blocks. When I use the blocks, I'm lifting the floor up. I'm pressing down. I'm not collapsing into the blocks. I'm pushing them away from me. So I'm pushing down and out. And then I'm beginning that process of slowly lifting to go forward. Folks, this is where it's very important to have the cervical spine of the neck and the lumbar spine of that low back doing that, um, that Lord Dotted curve that we were talking about, that extension. So I just want to come into this for you and open all of the structures up that we were just with the twisting, rotating. We'll do it for a few moments. Breathe in. This is a great posture to breathe into the lower back muscles. And then taking your time to slowly walk the blocks back in, but always forward to come up. Watch out for this, folks. How many times I see this and people think, well, I'm getting closer to the floor. No, you're not. Look how far back your back is. So use the strap. Work on this stuff. That'll help you. All right. Now, I'm going to pull out my bolster for your DIY, if you have it. And um, those of you with hypertension, vertigo, and um, GERD, I want you to have a block for your head. So we're going to come here. And I want you to bend your knees. And you're going to sit so that the bolster, you're on the floor, your butt is on the floor, but your back is touching the bolster. And I want everybody to lower their elbows down. But this is where, because we're definitely going to fold over this bolster. And that's why when your head drops back for those three issues, please put the block underneath your head. And, well, I'm going to go for it because I love this thing. Oh, it just feels so lovely. And you just slowly open everything up here. You've got that throat open. Folks, this is just a stunning thing to do for your thyroid gland. If you have hypo or hyperthyroidism, oh, just go for it. Feels great on the back. It's a lovely back extension. Allows you to breathe more deeply in, with the diaphragm. And it, it's a gentle way, and it does incorporate chest breathing, but that's appropriate because it's all open here. And if you want, you could also come into goddess pose here. And if it's too much of an opening at the inner thigh groin area, put your blocks. But now this is just fantastic because it's one of the few poses you actually can do after eating. The abdominal organs and intestines are just kind of relaxing and hanging out. It's a wonderful way to connect with your diaphragm, folks. Stretching out the pectoralis, the front deltoid, the biceps, those anterior neck muscles. So this is a supported reclining version of um, Baddha Konasana, cobbler's pose as well. So it's Salamba Supta Baddha Konasana. And then bringing the hands underneath the knees, slowly draw them together. And you can also play with just a little variation here on your Shavasana on corpse. And so you have those three different approaches to doing the posture. And then to come out of it, we bend the knees and then we roll on over. Now, I'm supposed to say, Amy, then you roll over to the right because historically for, I don't know, thousands of years, you roll over to the right. But I don't know, it's 2023 and people have different issues. I say roll over to whichever side feels better for you. Now, I'm going to take this bolster, 
Separate the knees. Bring it here right in front of me. And I'm just going to drape over it. Now, for those of you with knee issues that you might want to come a little more forward, bring your bolster forward so you can lower your forehead. If you don't want to do it that way, then you can also come onto your back and bring your knees up into your chest. You just let it all go. Now I'm going to place one hand on top of the other, and I'm going to bring my third eye point, the Ajna Chakra, on the middle knuckle of the top hand, lowering down. And breathe into that, the small of the back, it's just divine. Inhale, lift the head, bring the opposite hand on top, exhale, lower. The Ajna Chakra is the seat of our intuition and creativity, and its color is the color Indigo blue. You can pull forward and just drape over this thing. Oh, it's so delicious. You can relax the arms alongside of you, out almost like an airplane position. Whatever you choose to do, though. Just make sure you turn the head in both directions. You can do a gentle pulse of the hips to release that back. And then I'm going to pull back. And for our final posture, Amy, we're going to grab, I'm going to grab my cushion and put it right up against the wall. And folks, you know, get super friendly with this wall, or as they say in France, super, super friendly. Bring your side of the body all the way up to the wall. Now, I'm on my cushion. I'm going to turn and then swivel up the wall and just scoot myself a little closer to the wall. If I want to be closer, you don't have to be. And this posture is called Viparita Karani, legs up the wall pose. And I want to dedicate this pose to our dear friend, Amy Stacy Heine, because every time she does this, she takes up, she posts her toes, legs up the wall on social media. It's just hilarious. She has great, great quack toenails. I don't, I'm sorry. But the Viparita Karani is excellent for hypertension, depression, insomnia, and varicose veins. It's just relaxing here. Release. Relax. Let go. Drop down heavy into the ground. Soften the face. Relax the mouth, releasing the tongue away from the roof of the mouth and allowing it to rest behind the lower teeth. Letting the eyes rest deeply in their sockets. Now bringing the palms together in front of the heart once again, Anjali Mudra, and in gratitude and appreciation for good health. Once again, appreciating our bodies for working so hard for us and sending love and light to all those in need. The light and spirit within me honors the light and spirit within you. Thank you all so much. Namaste. Now to come out of it, you bend your knees, roll over to the safer side. Obviously can't go in this direction, right? Uh, you slowly come on up. I'm going to pull back. 
pull out over here for you, Amy, if you have any more questions. That was wonderful. I. I just feel so calm now, <laughs> you know, and I was even kind of yawning a couple of times <laughs> and your voice is soothing too. So that was nice.